Hey, hey, friends. This is Martine Williams, and I am obsessed with all things Mompreneur Life and helping you to remix your priorities, your habits, your mindsets, and yes, even your relationships so that you can build a successful business without losing yourself in the process. I'm also obsessed with the killer turquoise and lyrics of the 80s and 90s, but that's beside the point. Girlfriend, you don't have to hustle 24-7, 365, and continue to sacrifice your health, your relationships, and your sanity to be a successful mompreneur. As a small town girl living in a lonely world to a six-figure mompreneur, I am here to teach you how. There is a better way, and this podcast is your one-stop shop for all of the how-tos, the encouragement, the life hacks, the success tips, and of course, a little side of tough love. This is the Mompreneur Life Remix Podcast, so let's do this. Welcome back, friends, to the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast. This is Martine Williams, your host and CEO, Chief Encouragement Officer. Today is our 100th episode of the podcast. It's really kind of surreal to to see that we're we're still here. You're still listening. You're still sharing the show. You're still tuning in every single week. And I am just really, really excited for this milestone moment because, you know, podcasting is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. And when I started it, I really didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how long it would last. I didn't know if it was something that I really want wouldn't continue to enjoy doing. And it has become such a fun and a meaningful way for me to connect with you, my audience, and to bring on um, amazing mompreneurs, entrepreneurs to come on the show and share with you their journey, their stories, Um, stories have such a huge impact on other people because we can relate to them, right? A lot of things, maybe not the exact story, but we've had some amazing turquoise talk guests and I'm just really excited to celebrate our 100th episode. Um, So I'm going to be doing a little bit of a giveaway. So for those of you that go and leave a review on the show, so you can leave a rating and a review on your favorite episode or just, you know, what you think about the podcast. So all of you who put a rating or review review on this podcast, I'm going to be doing a drawing at the end, uh, well, beginning of the week. So thank you all. That is really the best way to keep me um, encouraged is just to share your thoughts and share these episodes. So thank you again so much. Um, a hundred episodes. And as I started thinking about, you know, what do I want to talk about on this hundred episode? There's so many things I could talk about. And I really just felt led to talk about the power of 100. And maybe you've heard someone talk about this before, but I've really just been praying through it and thinking through it. And um, just really felt led to kind of share, share this with you, because when you think about the power of 100, so my very first episode, I mean, I have a podcast editing team that makes me sound amazing. But again, I didn't know what I was doing, right? I was not an expert at podcasting. Even now, I wouldn't say I'm an expert. But because I've had 100 episodes, I'm definitely way better than I was on episode one, right? I have figured out how I want the show format to be. I have figured out what the appropriate guests are to come on the show and which ones are not. I have figured out that it's not always the big name people on here. It's just those who have a story and have value to bring to you because you know me, it's very important to me that I don't waste your time and I don't waste you know, any energy of yours and listening to something that's not going to bring value to you. So from episode one to now episode 100, uh, the show has has morphed, right? And it's gone from lots of solo episodes to you know one or two a month, and the rest turquoise turquoise talk guests. Um, it's gone from maybe um, structures and themes and things like that to me being just being more open to uh, who and what I'm going to bring to the show. Simply put, it's a better show than it was on day one. And I want you to think about that when you think about some things that you are trying to accomplish as we, you know, kids are going back to school and you're getting back in the swing of things. Like what are some things that you've been trying to accomplish maybe since January 
And now, you know, we're, you know, on the other side of the second half of, of the year. And how could the power of 100 help you? Number one, I think are realizing that to get to the hundred, you have to have the one, right? You have to have that first step um, to get to the 100. And you don't have to be great to get started, but you do have to start to be great. Y'all heard me say that before. I think that's a Zig Ziglar quote. So when you think about the power of 100, I want you to think as a business owner, how much different would your business be in 100 days if you went for 100 conversations? Like go for no, not let rejection get in the way, not let fear of rejection get in the way, not let any of the mind drama that goes around having the perfect conversation about your business, about what you offer, the solutions that you provide to people. Go for no. If you had a hundred conversations, one out of 10 will say yes, statistically, that would be 10 new clients, right? 10 new team members, 10 new uh, people that you get to serve. That's the power of 100. Let's think about exercise. That first step into the gym, it's uncomfortable. Um, Maybe if you haven't been to the gym in a really long time, you're going to be sore. You're going to not know exactly what you want to do. But by day 100, where would you be? Where will you be physically? Where will you be emotionally? Where will you be mentally? Where will your confidence be? Because you kept showing up. You kept pushing through the hard. A hundred days of affirmations. Where would you be mentally if every day for a hundred days you affirmed yourself? You weren't looking for affirmations from someone else. You weren't looking for affirmations from your husband, from your children, from your boss, from your coworker, but you took charge for a hundred days and affirmed yourself. Scripture, a hundred days of, of scripture, putting that truth into your mind, into your heart, into your spirit. How would you be? How different would you be? How would that impact all the areas of your life? Here's another one, a hundred days of getting seven to eight hours of sleep each night, like committing. I'm going to do a hundred days of getting good, adequate sleep. Now, some of you are like, I would love that. It sounds like a dream. And I struggle with sleep. I'm actually going to be bringing on a guest to talk about this because I've been hearing this a lot, especially for those going through menopause and I'm not an expert at this. So I'm going to bring on someone who is, but what would you look like and not look like, what would you feel like? What would your productivity be like at the end of that 100 days if you were just getting enough sleep, if you were going to bed at a decent time, if you were staying asleep, if you were doing things to help you get adequate sleep? I know some of you think you can get by in four to five hours. Science tells differently. 100 date nights. Where would your marriage be or your relationship be if you had 100 date nights? I have spoken to so many women over the years that it has been months six months or longer since they have had a date with their spouse. How's that working out for you? How much differently, how much more connected would you be with your spouse or your significant other if you purposely planned a hundred dates? I'm not saying you have to do a hundred dates in a row because you have jobs, you have lots of other things to do. But if you were to be consistent about a hundred dates, where would your marriage be? Where would the connection be? A hundred days of hydration. Some of us are walking around super hydrated and you just need to set this simple goal of a hundred days every day for a hundred days. I'm going to focus on my hydration. I'm going to have a water bottle. I'm going to have three water bottles already filled up. I'm going to know the flavoring I'm going to be putting in them because I plain water to me is boring. I have a really hard time staying hydrated. So I have the things that I want to add to my water. How would your body feel? How many, how would your immune system be boosted? What illnesses might you fight off because you've spent intentional time staying hydrated? What if you spent a hundred days of meal planning, a hundred days of meal planning, Now, this one feels hard because I don't love cooking. I don't really love meal planning. But if you are trying to focus on weight loss, planning your meals for 100 days is going to significantly impact your nutrition and your fitness goals. So what would your nutrition look like? 
What would your overall health look like if you spent the next 100 days meal planning, taking the time to create healthy choices for yourself? The first time you do it, it's going to be messy, right? You're not going to have it all figured out on what you're going to cook, how you're going to cook, how long it's going to take. It's probably going to take you longer the first couple of days, but by day 100, you're going to have it. You're going to have it down pat. You're probably going to know your system. Just like, you know, that first date that you need to go on with your spouse is going to be uncomfortable if it's been six months, but by date 100, you are going to be connected on a whole new level. A hundred days of listening to podcasts. Y'all know I'm a big fan, obviously, because I have my own podcast, but even before I did, it's free content. It's free personal and professional development. Some of my biggest mentors and coaches have been from listening to podcasts. How would your day be different if you started the next 100 days listening to a podcast or while you're walking or while you're doing laundry, while you're in the shower, get a waterproof speaker. There are ways, even if you have littles, there are ways to get this time in. 100 days of prayer. Where would your spiritual life be if you spent the next 100 days committing to praying, maybe for a specific situation, but also maybe just praying to, to feel that closeness again. And you just spend time praying the converse or the opposite of this would be, maybe there's some things you need to spend a hundred days, not doing removing from your life because it's not serving you and you need to just break the habit. A hundred days of no alcohol. I have a friend that I just saw just completed this and she started out with a 75 day goal and now she's hit day 100. And, you know, she's like, it doesn't mean I'm never going to have um, a cocktail again, but I may not because after like day one was super hard day two, day three, probably the first 30 days was difficult, right? Because it takes a while for you to create these new habits of thought, number one, and number two, the actions to follow. But now she's like, I don't even know if I want to go back to that, right? To the feeling bad, to being, you know, having the, the, the brain fog and all the things that, that come with that. So maybe for you, it's a hundred days of removal of something, a hundred days of removing alcohol, a hundred days of no sugar, a hundred days of no TV. How would your goals be impacted if you weren't wasting time watching TV and social media? If you took a hundred days and decided that, you know, maybe just for the week, during the work week, I'm not going to watch TV or maybe it is like no TV at all uh, for hundred days or no social media at all. Um, if you have a business, it's a little, dip, little difficult, but how different would your goals be? Would your life be? Would your confidence be? Would your anxiety be? Would your depression be if you were not spending so much time watching TV and scrolling on social media? So maybe for you, the power of 100 is removing something for 100 days. Maybe it's it's removing contact with a toxic person that's in your life right now. And you just need to spend the next 100 days disconnected from them or more con- disconnected from them. 100 days of connecting with your children on a different level, making sure that you're making that eye-to-eye contact with them. I don't know what the power of a hundred would be for you. I don't know the area of your life that that could be for you, but there is power in this simplicity of 100. That doesn't mean that on day one, you're going to feel like it because you're not. Something I talk about all the time with my clients, they beat themselves up because they don't understand why they can't just be a grown woman and, and just do this. And I have to explain to them over and over and over again, this is a new habit you're trying to form. You're not going to wake up tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, because you might be excited about this new decision you've made for yourself. But day 10, it's going to be hard. Maybe not as hard as day one, but it's a new uh, habit of thought that you're trying to create and then a new way of feeling and acting out to achieve this goal. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to wake up tomorrow and be like, oh, I'm going for the power of hundred workouts and it's going to be all great. It's going to be hard in the beginning. Day one is going to be hard, but you got to have a day one to have a day 100. You have to just get started and be willing to push through. And here's the other thing. You're not, we're not waiting until day 100 to celebrate. This is the other part when it comes to creating habits and um, creating progress which we know progress creates more progress is we don't celebrate along the way. So celebrate every day. The fact that you did what you said you're going to do day one, 
check. Like you've seen people doing this, uh, what's it called? 75 hard. And there's certain things they have to do, right? And they can, they have a little graphic for them to check it off. Like it probably feels amazing every day they check it off and they see how much closer they are to their goals. So every day you're going to celebrate. I did what I said I was going to do. I'm not on day 100, but I'm not on day one anymore, right? And you're going to make the progress and see the progress that you're trying to create. Hey friend. So you have been trying to make some shifts this year. Maybe you set some resolutions and you're just feeling stuck. You don't feel like you're making progress or you're just not sure what to do. And you've heard me say this before, but being stuck is a mindset, not a position. And this is where a coach comes in to support you. Because here's what I know to be true about you, friend. If you could have done it alone, you would have already done it, period. And as a life coach and a certified PDP professional, I specialize in using a research-based personality and performance survey called the ProScan to illuminate how your unique personality and natural strengths, your work and life environments are influencing real-time performance. So here's what you need to do. Go to the link in the show notes and book your free clarity call to learn more about how I can support you in your goals. I can't wait to illuminate your strengths, cultivate your confidence and elevate your life. Okay. So I want to shift gears a little bit now, and we're still going to be talking about the hundred, the power of a hundred, but I want you to think about, and maybe you've heard of the hundred percent rule. Simply put the hundred percent rule states that that 99% is difficult. A hundred percent is easy. What this means is that like a 99% Commitment to something is hard, while a hundred percent commitment is effortless. Now, I don't necessarily agree with it being hard or easy because I think you can be a hundred percent committed to something and it's still difficult. It's still hard to do. It's not impossible, but it's still hard to do. But what they're trying to say is when we fully commit to a habit, right? We just talked about you know hundred days. Um, when you fully commit to a habit, when you fully commit to a lifestyle change or action it becomes easier. When we're only 99% committed, it becomes arduous and difficult. Like there's so much mental drama going up on he- up here when you're only 99% committed, um, you become a fence sitter. And I actually just did a training where I talked about this in a business and you can apply fence sitting. Like when you say, I'm going to try, I want you to imagine yourself getting up on the fence and straddling the fence because that's what's happening. When you say, I'm going to try, when you're only 99% committed, it becomes painful to straddle that fence. It steals your joy. It exhausts you mentally because you're constantly asking yourself the question, should I, instead of how will I? Should I, instead of how will I? And we need to stop spending so much time. I think I've said this many times in my episodes, trying to make the right decision. Instead, pull the trigger, make the decision and commit to doing the work to make it the right decision. But we since spend so much time in the land of indecision, spend so much time sitting up on that fence. We're 99% committed, but that 1% makes a huge difference. We start shooting all over the place. Should I do this? Should I try this new business? Should I try this new workout? Should I try this new new diet? We're shooting all over ourselves. Become we become should heads, and it literally swings our commitment in the opposite direction of our goals. It keeps us busy in mind drama, but in, but not in the business of crushing our goals. So that 1% is what's making you a fence sitter right now. If you're not all in fully committed, then you're going to be seeing backdoor options. You're going to be giving yourself excuses. When we make a conscious decision to commit ourselves a hundred percent to doing something, we are in essence eliminating any exceptions or other possible choices. If you're a hundred percent in, then you know, committed to it, then you're, you're not even going to entertain any backdoor options or excuses. You're going to make progress instead of making excuses. There are no ifs, wins, or buts. There's no room for flexibility because we have decided that we'll do it regardless of circumstances. And here's the kicker. You'll do it regardless of how you feel. Commitment means staying loyal to what you said you were going to do, even when the feeling that you set it in has passed. That is what true commitment is. That is what hundred percent all in is it's a signed, sealed and delivered decision to your brain, which removes any other possibilities or backdoor options. Not doing it becomes a non-option. 
becomes a non-option. Indecision is still a decision. Someone, someone needs to hear that. Indecision is still a decision. You're, if you're in the land of indecision, you're just, you're choosing and deciding to sit on that fence and stew about it. You know, what should I charge for my, my service? This is one that I have stewed over and over and over and over and over again, gone around, 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 had so much mind drama on that I've had to coach myself out of. And I was making a decision to just sit there in that land of confusion. Instead of just making a decision, here's the price, go. Here's here's the name of the product, go. And test it and see, but be 100% committed to it. It makes the results even harder to, to achieve when we haven't fully committed to it because you have so much mind drama that's going on. You have so many disbeliefs or like I said, there's always that crack in the, in, in that door for you to go out the back. Conversely, when we only make a 99% committal to doing something that leaves again, room for exceptions, errors, and other choices. It means that we are not, we are committing to it, but not all the way. We're committing to it 99%, but we're not all in. A 99% committal implies that there are times when we may do it and then we may not. We may feel like making that call today in our business. We feel like going to the gym that day 99% of the time, but we're not all in on our decision. And so uh, depending on circumstances and situations, you may just not do it. It leaves the door open for resistance and a non-doing, non-action. And that becomes difficult. I was actually talking to uh, one of my coaching clients today and she was just like, you know, it, I start spiraling down into feeling bad that I didn't do what I said I was going to do. Right. So when you, when you're 99% committed, then, then you're, you're doing a lot of great things, but you're not all in. And so then you start beating yourself up about the 1% that you're not committed to. So that's why it's easier to be a hundred percent committed, hundred percent committed to your decision. You can change your mind and become a hundred percent committed to something else. But when you're 99% committed, even that 1% makes a big difference. The difference between people who are highly successful and those who are not is that extra 1% of commitment. I want you to think about that. The people who are successful in reaching their goals have that extra 1%. That's it. That's it. It's not talent. It's not necessarily a skill set. It's that they're all in on their goals, on the actions they need to take. They don't leave any room for excuses or backdoor options. It's I'm committed. I'm moving forward. High achievers know the power of the 100% rule and they adhere to it no matter what the circumstances are. They do not allow anything or anyone to dissuade or prevent them from doing what they have committed themselves to do. It becomes easy because they have eliminated all of their choices. When you have all of these, should I, should I, should I in our brain, you have all these decisions to make or choices that are up there. It exhausts you mentally. And it's really hard to follow through on that commitment when you're still trying to figure out if you even want to do the thing right? So be honest with yourself, be hundred percent in or be hundred percent out. As the great philosopher Yoda says, do or do not, there is no try. When a client of mine says, I'm going to try and do that. I'm like, you literally just gave yourself an out. You just gave yourself an out. Do or do not. There is no try. Saying I will try, give yourself a backdoor option and you will take that backdoor option when it gets tough. You'll take that backdoor option when you hear no. You'll take that backdoor option when your husband doesn't respond to, you know, your, your date night. Um, you're, you'll take the backdoor option when you're feeling sore from going to the gym. You'll take the backdoor option when the pound doesn't come off that week. No, stay a hundred percent committed to what you said that you were going to do. So think about the areas in your life that you have been wanting to improve, but have not experienced success in. It could be the desire to lose weight, to write a book. Maybe you want to start a blog, stop, stop drinking alcohol, med- meditate daily, start your own business, climb a mountain, travel the world. There's all different things. Have you made a hundred percent commitment to achieve it? Or have you made a partial commitment? Have there been times when you have rationalized in your head why it's okay not to follow through with your plans? I know I certainly have. And it got me nowhere. When you start getting in your mind, you start rationalizing, oh, well, just this one won't make a difference. Skipping this one day won't make a difference. This is not about perfection. Um, this is just about being 100% committed to it on the days you don't feel like it and on the days that you do. And you don't have to apply the 100% rule to everything you do. It's important to have fun, relax, appropriate time to do nothing. If you close your eyes and just really think about the areas in your life 
that would best be served by applying the 100% rule. It could be your goal to stop smoking. It could be to get fit, to write the book, to improve your marriage, to start a business, to get your college degree, surround yourself with positive people, eat healthier, stop drinking alcohol, et cetera. Think of areas of your life you really want to improve and excel in and then commit fully by applying the 100% rule. So for example, if you wanted to stop smoking, you could commit to never smoking a cigarette ever again, no matter the circumstances. If you want to get fit, you could commit to exercising for 30 minutes a day on Monday through Friday without ever skipping a day. If you want to write a book, you commit to writing five pages every day, no matter how you feel every day, even if it's the crappiest writing you've ever done, stay committed, stay committed to doing it. If your goal is to get your bachelor's or master's degree, you could commit to enrolling in college, take four classes each semester. If you want to surround yourself with positive people, you commit to getting rid of toxic and negative friends in your life and meeting one new friend each week, committing to going out to networking events. If you want to start your own business, commit to taking the necessary steps each day to get your business up and running, never giving up no matter what. Being a mompreneur, those of you that are listening that are, you know, it's hard. It is not for everybody. But when you 100% commit to it, then you will do the things that are going to move the needle in your business and you'll do less of the things that are not. Even on the days when you don't feel like following through on that commitment, do it anyway. Even when you don't feel like it, do it anyway. That is the difference between a 99% commitment and one that is 100% commitment. The point is to commit fully and make no exceptions. If you're 100% all in, you will succeed. And, you know, when you're thinking about the the power of the 100, like if you're going to do 100 days of this or 100 days of not this, we're not going for perfection here. And again, this 100% rule is not, I want you to get into the necessarily all or nothing mentality, but it is a commitment to yourself so that you can prove to yourself you can stay committed to something and you can see it through. And then the results are going to follow. There's so much confidence when you stick to a commitment. and if it is a hundred days that you're going to do, if it's 90 days, you're going to do whatever you're going to set for yourself on this, it's going to get easier and it's going to become part of who you are and how you operate. You're no longer going to be the fence sitter. You're no longer going to be the person who lives in indecision because you're going to see the results of someone who is a hundred percent commit commitment. You're going to see the results of someone who has that extra 1%. And, you know, it's it's easy to think God, it's only 1%. That 1% is that little crack in the door that either gets shut and you're all in and you're not looking back or that you're going to take the back door option on. When you commit yourself to 100% to a goal, it puts things in perspective and it prioritizes your life. It prioritizes how you spend your time, how you spend your money, how you spend your resources. You will not be in that lane of indecision where you're trying to figure out what am I, how am I supposed to do this today? Or how am I going to, what tasks do I need to perform each day? No matter, you're going to, no matter the situation, you're going to know what to do because you're hundred percent committed to doing it. And your brain will go to work because you've given it a directive that I'm committed to this. I'm going to see this through one piece of this that um, I want to add is where's your accountability going to come from? Because even the most committed people have those days where you're just like, mm, progress isn't coming like I thought, right? My results are not coming as fast as I thought. So who is that accountability partner? Who is that person that you can say, this is what I've committed to? Help me to not give up on this. Help me to stay focused on this. Maybe that's why a lot of people you see do the 75 hard together because it's hard. It's hard to stay committed to all of those things for 75 days, but when you have a community around you, so I would say and encourage you to find that person or persons that you can do this hundred percent or hundred days um, goal with. But I really want you to be honest with yourself when you're, when you're saying you want something and you want to achieve something, is it a 99% commitment you want, or is it a hundred percent? Because depending on which one you are, will decide the actions that you'll take. And just be honest, like if you don't want it, just say you don't want it. it. You know, if it's not a priority for you right now, it's not a priority for you right now. Just be honest with yourself so that you can adjust and take the actions that you need to take. As you accomplish your goals, you can add new ones to commit to. And 
it will be a really exciting process for you to change your thought patterns here when it comes to commitment. It's a powerful goal-centric way of living your life. It builds mental toughness and tenacity, like that grit to see th- see something through. And again, it's going to spill into other areas. So um, this is not like everything you do in life is going to be 100%. That's not what I'm saying. Pick one thing, one area that you want to prove to yourself that you can stay and be committed all in on because it will build mental toughness and tenacity and it'll make you excited to like, let's do that again. That was fun. It's not fun sitting on the fence, not fun sitting in the land of indecision. It's not fun of, you know, being 99% committed and doing it on some days and not on others because you beat yourself up on the days you don't do it. The 100% rule will also help you free your mind of things that are trivial because you're so focused on your commitments. You don't have time for the trivial things. You don't have time to be him and hawing and shooting all over the place. You're committed. You know what you're going to do. You may need help on how you're going to do it, but you know what to do and you're going to be following through. Remember that people who succeed and excel do not have super or magical powers. They really don't. They are merely reaping the benefit of their commitment. They're a hundred percent in. There's no reason for anyone listening. There's no reason why you cannot do the same. Apply the hundred percent rule to your goals and you will accomplish amazing things. That 1% is the game changer for you achieving your goals or not achieving your goals. So congratulations, 100th episode. I'm so excited. I hope this was helpful for you. I would love for you to come find me on Instagram and let me know what you thought of this episode. Let me know, like, is there something that you're like, I'm I'm fully 100% committed to that I can cheer you on? Are you going to do 100 days of something? Are you going to take something away for 100 days? I really love to discuss this with you on Instagram. So come find me at martine31williams. And yeah, I'm excited to, to, to see the impact of this episode. I know it's really given me a great reminder and food for thought on some of the things that I'm saying I want to accomplish, but pretty sure I'm not even 99% committed on some of them. So I have to do my own digging here and my own thoughts and, and uh, investigating of where I'm at and do I really want the things, some of the things that I say that I want, because um, it is frustrating to say one thing and do another. And then you just kind of spiral down into that um, comparison and self-doubt and you just beat yourself up. Right. So I'm cheering you on. I'm believing in you always, you know that, and I will catch you on the next episode. Thank you so much again for continuing to love the show, share the show. Don't forget, I'll be doing a a giveaway for those of you that go and leave a review on the podcast, and I will catch you on the next episode. Well, that's a wrap friends for this week's episode of the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and for following the show. It means so much to me. And listen, friend, sharing is caring. So if you love this episode and thought of some fellow mompreneurs who could benefit, send them the link, share this episode, or take a screenshot and head on over to Instagram and share and tag me at martine31williams. We are connected on Instagram, right? It's where you will get all the fun behind the scenes of my life and business as a mompreneur. Until next time, know that I am believing in you always.